The Lord be with you. And a blessed Thanksgiving as we gather together once a year. We take this second Sunday in October to, to pause and give thanks for God's goodness and gifts. And this morning in my message, we'll talk about not the words we say, but to whom we say them and why we say them. Those two words, thank you. Our order for service as printed in your bulletin, Holy Communion service. And we begin as we always do at the font of our baptism, confessing our sins, receiving the promise of God's forgiveness. I ask you to please turn to our service order and rise. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Our gathering hymn is 879. Sacrifice all. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson is from Deuteronomy 8, verses 7 to 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters, welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. 
We shall read responsively Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer, to you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance. O God of our salvation, you are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength you establish the mountains, you are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. Make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it, you greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. Crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. The second lesson is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 15. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He supplies seed to the sower, and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Here in the readings. gospel for thanksgiving is from Luke chapter 17. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. And then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. And then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Peace to you, O Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I think the least controversial holiday in the year is Thanksgiving. <laughs> 
There isn't much to worry about. It's probably the most straightforward holiday there is. There isn't a lot of commercialism to worry about. I think if you go to the stores these days, people are much more interested and preoccupied with Halloween preparations than anything else. Thanksgiving gets a pass. And it isn't even specifically a religious holiday. We, in our tradition of the church, have chosen a Sunday to celebrate Thanksgiving. But everyone, believer or not, can get on board with this holiday. And why is that? Because everybody likes to eat together. Everyone likes to sit around a big table with family, eat too much turkey or whatever else is particularly delicious. We don't have an argument with Thanksgiving, whether we're talking about the second weekend of October or the word in general, Thanksgiving. Can't we all agree after all that gratitude is always a good thing? Who can argue with that? And so, as it is done every year, Father plugs in the electric knife, carefully starts to slice the turkey breast into nice thin pieces because he knows that everyone likes them thin. And as he does this ritual every year, he remembers. And as he works and as he slices, his thoughts turn to the last year. Well, at least we survived more or less in one piece. Not like the poor Wilsons across the street. What a year they've had. Wouldn't want to be them. And at least our mortgage is almost paid off, and I don't have to chew my nails every time the bills come. And thank God we don't live down where all those hurricanes are, or over there in Gaza or Haiti. What a mess. By now the turkey is sliced, and as everyone piles their plates, Father puts the knife down, wipes his brow, and sighs his version of his prayer of relief. Thank God we're the lucky ones. You're driving slowly on the highway beside a crash site, and your inner thoughts are this. You know, if I hadn't slowed down and let that car pass, it would have been me in that ambulance. What a relief. Thank God it wasn't me. Flipping through the channels on the TV, on the evening news, the local news, there is that lottery winner who thanks God for hitting the jackpot. Then you turn to TSN, the football game, and the, you see the player who kneels down in the field and humbly points to the sky after scoring the winning touchdown. Thank God I did it. And you keep flipping through the channels. There's the actor who thanks God for winning the Oscar. And the politician who thanks God for beating the opposition on election night. You see, there's plenty of thanksgivings to go around. There's plenty of people who know how to say thank you. But many of these thank yous are really just generic, open-ended feelings of relief, projected heavenward to who, knows where, to who knows who might be listening. What is this God's name? The lottery king? The invisible hand of the free market? Fate? Fortune? Good luck? The universe? the heavenly dice thrower. You know, the God who decides who gets rich and who stays broke, the God who says, who decides who gets the sunshine and who gets the rain, the God who decides who dies from a stroke and who survives, or who decides who gets the home run and who strikes out. And so all across this nation this weekend, people are thanking this God that they've made it through another year, that they are the lucky ones. The God of good luck has smiled on them. You see, the how is easy. You just open your mouth and speak the two words, thank you. And around these tables, how often, though, the, mid the critical question is overlooked. Who are we thanking and why? 
And here is where I get to the heart of what I want to say today. And what I want to say is this. Truly thankful people know who they are thanking and why. It's biblical. In our first reading in Deuteronomy, God makes a promise to the wandering nation of Israel out in the desert that one day they will dwell in a land of milk and honey. And God warns them that when times are good again, they must remember the God who brought them there. When times are good, you see, it's easy to forget the stories that count. And so we read, Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God, and when your herds and flocks and silver and gold is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, etc. In other words, Israel, when life is good, don't forget the story of how you got there. Learn these stories, teach your children, tell them over and over again so that God alone is exalted and praised and honored and thanked. Biblical thanksgiving is never random. Biblical thanksgiving is always connected to a story, God's story. And we need to know God's story well so that our praise and thanksgiving is based on what is true, not on what we want to be true or what we wish or what we think is true. The word orthodoxy means literally right praise. And right praise does not flow from our emotions. It does not flow from our feelings. It does not flow from circumstances. It does not flow from what we imagine God is or does. Right praise flows from the story we know, the story we've been given, the biblical story of God's dealing with us. Because without this story to ground us, to form us and shape us, our thanksgivings and praise become trite and completely unmoored, anchorless and subjective. Our thanksgiving Thanksgivings are given to a God who is nothing more than our imaginations of what God should be. Again, a lottery king, a spinner of the roulette wheel of life and death and fate and fortune. <clears throat> Whoever, whatever suits you. <clears throat> when Martin Luther was asked long ago this question, how can a poor, confused person tell where Christian holy people are found in this world? He had a seven-part answer. <clears throat> and one of the parts he answered was this. He says, you will recognize Christians by their prayer, praise, and thanksgiving to God. Wherever you see and hear the Lord's prayer prayed and taught, or psalms or other spiritual songs sung, in accordance with the word of God and the true faith, also the creed, the Ten Commandments, and the catechism used in public, you may rest assured that a holy Christian people of God are present. <clears throat> what this means is that the church's thanksgivings are not aimed at the empty sky, but always rooted in God's story. The creeds, for example, they tell and retell that story. That's why we say one every week. The creed is the story of God's love for us in Jesus. We repeat the words week after week, not out of routine, but rather so we do not forget who we are thanking and why. I believe who in God the Father. I believe who in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe in who? God the Holy Spirit. This is critical information that keeps our praise right. The stories have to be told and retold to each other and so that our thanksgivings and praise will be grounded in what is true. This is why Bible study and regular Bible reading is not an option for Christians. And this is why so much of our liturgy every Sunday is really just a retelling of the story of what God has done. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. This is the feast of victory for our God. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who is slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. God's story is being told again and again, proclaiming and pointing, listen, hear what God has done for you. 
These stories and creeds and liturgies keep our praises right, directed not to whomever may be up there listening, but to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity revealed in Scripture and the stories therein. These last weeks, we've all been getting a taste of how shaky some of our so-called firm foundations are. The war, wars grow more serious every day. Anxiety grows as elections both here in Canada and south of the border are looming. There's housing crises, health crises. COVID is still as strong among us, even though we don't talk about it much anymore. A sense of security in day-to-day life seems to be many, for many to be harder and harder to grasp. And so as we sit down to our Thanksgiving table this year, we need more than ever to be clear as to who we are thanking and why. We are not thanking the God of circumstances. We are not thanking the God of good luck or the Lord of wherever the wind is blowing. If this were so, then for many of us, the luck seems to be running out. No, people of God, we know exactly who and why we thank today. It is the God whose story is beyond any circumstance. We thank the God of Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Jacob. We thank the God who made us, called us, and pursued us in deep love for centuries. We thank the God who would not abandon us, but became one with us in Jesus Christ. We thank the God who raised Jesus from the dead and put death to death and opened the door to a firm and forever future with Jesus. We thank the God who washed and welcomed us in our baptism into Christ. We thank the God who feeds us still today with his very body and blood in bread and wine. That's God's story, and that is our story. So we do not thank a God who simply spins the roulette wheel with our lives. We do not thank a God whose blessing and presence changes with the circumstances. Yes, stocks soar and fall, sickness and earthquakes and tragedies and great pain and sorrow come to us. Christians are not immune. Circumstances knock us too. They burden us and they overwhelm us mightily. The difference, well, we don't have to cross our fingers and hope that there's some God up there who will be good to us or watch out for us because we know God's story. We've read it. We've learned it. We've made it our own. We know what God thinks of us. We know what God's got in store for us in Jesus Christ. We know what cannot be taken away from us. We know what will last and what will not. We're not thankful because we're lucky, luck changes. We're not thankful because we feel blessed today. Feelings change. We are thankful because of God's story about us and for us, wrapped up in the person of Jesus Christ. That will not change, no matter what else does. So learn and hear this story, people of God. Know it well. It is the foundation, the source of our thankful hearts today. Let our praise be right praise. Let our thanks be founded and grounded in what God has done, in God's story. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The hymn of the day is 840. Now thank we all our God.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Well, in our prayers today, of course, we want to remember the family of Asusa, our sister and friend here, and our parish secretary for many years. Um, we lost her last week, and we are sad. And we want to uh, say that we will be having a memorial service next Saturday at 1 o'clock here at the church. So please spread the word to those who you think might need to know that. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Bountiful God, you feed us through the richness of the land, water, sunlight, and crops. Bless all those who cultivate the land to bring forth its bounty, especially farmers and migrant workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you order our lives by your goodness. We give you thanks for laws and leadership that structure and support our human work. Align our purposes with your own, that all our undertakings might bring you glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you open our hearts in compassion for one another. We give you thanks for the care and healing received through the hands and feet of your servants. Send us to love those most in need of your mercy, especially today, Krista Shamanki, Meto Walter, Kadira Fraser, Egon Litzman. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you connect and strengthen us through meals and conversation with family and friends. In this time of thanksgiving, steer us from passive receiving to active response, from old, old quarrels to reconciliation and from overconsumption to true gratitude. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, we give thanks for the love and care we have received from saints who've gone before us. We remember today our sister in Christ, and our fellow servant, Asusa. May she find rest in the arms of the Good Shepherd, and may her friends and family know God's peace as we mourn together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Are there any other requests for prayer this morning? Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Our worship continues with the offering.
please rise. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we've gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of heaven and earth, holy, 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 mighty, merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come for all is now ready. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Let us pray. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you unto life everlasting. Amen. O God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Again, our sympathies to you, Katya, and family as you mourn the loss of your sister. And uh, we, we mourn the loss of a friend and a colleague and co-worker with us, and uh, as I mentioned, we will gather again next Saturday here at 1 o'clock for a memorial service for Asusa. So again, please let those who you think should know, know that as well. A couple of things from the bulletin. We have, again, thank you, Irene, for the display and your, whoever helped you. I don't know if you had helpers or not, but we did. For all who helped, you're nodding your head there, David, so I guess, were you one of them? or? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> But you know someone who was. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. I would have been impressed if you were, though. Anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful addition. And we do have, as you notice in the bulletin, we've had a partnership with uh, Sacred Heart Church, and Irene has been heading that up. Sandwich Club, making sandwiches once a month. Once a month. And we have a, a, a bit of a drive going on now for the next month, gathering boxed, cookies and snacks that can be put in lunch boxes and uh, we'll be collecting them until is it November 13th so if you're able to bring something to uh, we'll just leave the display as it is is that a, or not okay yeah because I guess the pumpkins might go bad in a month so <laughs> so take home whatever you brought that would be great Thank you again for that. Um, and also we have our newsletter, our Thanksgiving newsletter. I'll lie and say we planned it so it would be ready just for Thanksgiving Day, but it is here today, our newsletter, finally, Thanksgiving newsletter. So I'll exit this way and please proceed to the far wall and look up your last name alphabetically and get the newsletters to distribute and of family members who aren't here and uh, we'll mail the rest out tomorrow. They give us information, they have the updated calendar for the rest of my time with you and uh, some other important information as well. So please make sure you get a newsletter before we go. Anything else? Yes. In front of the kitchen now. Yeah. Good. And I should also mention, I think, that we will have regular office hours still, even though uh, Asus is not with us. So, or you can leave a message at the phone if anybody needs to get a hold of me or anyone in the office, voicemails checked regularly, so that communication is still ongoing. Our closing hymn is 881. Please stand. <laughs> 